In today's episode. Want me in full compliance? Okay. I don't care what you have to do just get it all done your bonuses are on the line, sweet overtime pay. Do your own dishes? Sure thing. So let's get started. Want me in full compliance? Okay. So a few years ago, I used to work for a mid-sized traffic control company, think detours, lane closures, and the like. The training was three to five days of safety, first aid, CPR, BBP, blood-borne pathogens, and flagging, those guys with the stop-slash-slow paddles. You would be assigned with a senior TCS, traffic control specialist, until such time they considered you to be senior enough to be one yourself. For me, this ended up being three months after hire. More training included all of the possible traffic control setups under various conditions and was a state DOT, Department of Transportation, licensed and administered class. They also taught you defensive driving and how to safely drive with a trailer, aero board, light tower, portable air compressor, or generator. I used to be hounded daily by my supervisors that my work zones were never in compliance with the material we trained to do. I was told that I can't fill out a non-typical work zone form any longer had and to comply with DOT regulations in all of my work zones. Anyone that has worked in this field or with crews that had people that do this job know, it is impossible to strictly adhere to the zone setups in the DOT handbook. Distances are exact, sign packages are exact, and since they are all DOT mandated, you can't make any changes to their layouts. I have all of my supervisors' complaints on my phone since they use text messages as their main way of communication. In comes malicious compliance. I let my foreman know that my supervisors are not happy with my work and want me to start adhering to the DOT manual for all of my zones, and that will completely delay and even possibly prevent work from being done for up to two hours while I set up a zone in compliance with DOT standards. He's on board because he's never had an issue with my work and would love for a safer work environment. We hatch the plan that should my setup time take longer than one hour, my usual setup time is between 10 to 30 minutes, he'll call my supervisor down and say that I'm taking too long to get set up and they are losing time on their job sites. The first day I start doing this, I get the zone set up in compliance in just under an hour. They start working and are done within 15 minutes, and I'm given the address to the next work site. I start breaking down my work zone as the book tells us to do, this takes me nearly 30 minutes to collect everything, and then another 20 minutes to get to the new work zone. Repeat the setup, another hour. They work for 30 minutes, new address is given, and I take 30 minutes to tear it down. This goes on for the whole 10-hour shift. Day 2 rolls along and I've been informed by my supervisor that my metrics, based on paperwork and work truck GPS logs, that I'm taking too long at each site when setting up and breaking down each work zone, and that I need to speed it up to where I was pre-MC. I informed them that I cannot go any faster as I was told by them, in writing, text message, that I can no longer set up zones out of compliance with how I was trained. For some reason this didn't set off any alarm bells in their head, and I resumed the day as normal. Taking over an hour this day to set up each zone, with 30-minute breakdowns as we go from place to place. My foreman is starting to get a little twitchy as his boss is starting to get on his case about not getting as many tickets done as normal. He lets his boss know what is going on and his boss has a good laugh and says carry on then, I know the TCS guy you're working with, and he's not intentionally trying to slow us down he's just doing his job. We get to the third day, and now my foreman is extremely pissed off at me because he's being delayed at each work zone when he doesn't have to be and calls my supervisor to complain about how long I take setting up zones than I was I used to. About 15 minutes later my supervisor comes down and starts shadowing me. I'm setting up my zones with 100% compliance to DOT regulations, and it takes me an hour to do so. 30-minute breakdown, and we're off to the next work zone. At this zone, we have an intersection, and they are working in it. Normally, this isn't an issue, and I can get things done with just my partner, but since I'm doing MC, I tell my foreman we can't set up here until he calls my supervisor, and has two more TCS come to assist in controlling the traffic. 
DOT mandate says one flagger for each direction at an intersection, and I have to be in 100% compliance. He calls my supervisor, who is right up the road witnessing everything I've been doing. They arrive while still on the phone and start chewing me out for milking hours and purposely slowing down the crew I'm assigned to, and that I don't need more TCS to control the traffic at this intersection. I calmly tell them that they told me to be 100% compliant with my work zones, and that's what I was doing. They tell me to go back to the office and wait for them there while they assign a new crew to pick up where I left off. So I head back to the office and wait. I start chatting with the HR manager that I might need them in a few minutes to file a complaint if I get written up, I don't tell them exactly why, but they'll find out soon enough. My supervisor gets back and we start having a chat about my work performance. I was called a corner cutter by always setting up the minimum zones needed and that they wanted me to go above and beyond that and be 100% compliant. And when I started doing that, they noticed my productivity, aka their profit margins, had been cut in half. They accused me of being a malingerer, purposely working slowly, impeding the work crew I was assigned to, and generally being unsafe. So, I was written up for it, and when they handed me the paperwork to sign for the formal write-up I started questioning them on it. I'm not about to sign paperwork that will impact my employment and bonuses for doing my job as instructed by them. My first question was to have the HR manager in the office because I may have to file a complaint against my supervisor. They did not like this but legally couldn't prevent it. So the HR manager comes in and we start talking about the write-up. I explained that I was told to stop using non-typical work zone forms by my supervisor and to start making my zones 100% compliant. The HR manager laughs, they know full well what 100% compliance means and that it will take more than double the time for me to set up and tear down each zone. I also explained that I told my foreman that things were going to be different since my supervisor told me to become 100% complaint. Which is why the three of us are talking right now, I'm being written up for following the instructions I was given, and I refuse to sign a write-up punishing me for doing what I was instructed to do. I request that I would like to file a complaint against my supervisor for harassment and moving the goal posts. The HR manager's smile disappears, and my supervisor's sh asterisk t eating grin turns into a face of horror. Not only was I right, as evidence would show in my complaint, but this kind of write-up could get my supervisor transferred or even fired. My supervisor quickly tried to get the write-up into the paper shredder, but it was in my hands and all it required me to do was attach my signature and my case would be bulletproof. We came to a compromise, my supervisor would let me run my work sites as I used to, because in the real world, you can't always go by the book and I wouldn't file the complaint against them for sabotaging me. I don't care what you have to do just get it all done your bonuses are on the line, sweet overtime pay. This happened several months before I left my last job. The company I was working for went through something of a restructuring. The old owner and boss retired and handed the company to his youngest son, who in turn forced a lot of the great people in high positions out and replaced them with his underqualified friends. I was a team lead engineer in the safety and compliance department. I had a team of three senior engineers and their juniors, plus a personal secretary, two general secretaries, and an office administrator. One of the people hired to oversee all the engineers of the company was a fresh out of school business student who didn't know the first thing on what we do or how we do it. His mindset was getting more out of us than was actually possible. It was his brilliant idea to downsize the department. Before there were two teams like mine. Instead he moved one team to be on build site and pawned all the extra work on my team. Unfortunately we had already been swamped with the extra work. We were falling behind. The way our contracts were set up we had our base salary plus end of year bonuses, based on contract completion, plus any hours worked a week above 44, which was paid overtime at a premium rate. I went to the new department lead and I explained to him that we were swamped and needed a few new people or we needed another team. Him being the cost-cutting SOB, he was would hear nothing of it. 
Instead I was met with a, do what you have to do to get it done I don't care how much you have to work, or your yearly bonuses will be in jeopardy. I tried to explain the situation, that it's just too much work. His bright idea was to print out everything he said in his letterhead, sign it, and leave it at that. I had a nice long conversation with my team and the office administrator pointed out that we had, on company letterhead signed by the boss, a ticket for all the overtime we want. So that's what we did. We gave him exactly what he wanted. We got all the projects done by working 80-hour work weeks for three straight months. Let's just say the paychecks were beautiful. It was after the three-month mark I guess, someone in HR noticed the huge paychecks everyone in my department was pulling in. My boss and I were called into a meeting with HR and the owner of the company. Well, they tried say I was scamming the company out of money. In those three months they paid out almost 2x more than they would have if they kept the two teams as they were. But I had all the information I needed. I kept all the emails and signed documents from the department lead and handed everything over, photocopies. I also put down a copy of everyone's contract, with the bonus part highlighted, where it states paid on a per contract basis. That year my bonus was 3x bigger than it normally was. But after that incident I left the company, three months after it had become a crap working environment. On a side note, when I left the company they had to buy my contract out, but that's a completely different story. I'll tell it sometime. Additionally all of us who were eligible for the bonus took one third of our bonuses and split it with the support staff. Do your own dishes? Sure thing. Tried posting this on a throwaway because I didn't want this link to my main, but I'm guessing there's a karma minimum, so here we are. Otherwise, formatting on mobile and autocorrect might have been dumb. My sophomore year of college was an interesting time. My roommates and I didn't really see eye to eye following an incident very early in the school year, and they often ganged up on me regarding issues in the household, regardless of whether I played a hand in the issue or not. One such issue was the dirty dishes situation. Having lived in dorms the year prior, I had my own very basic dishes for the ramen and soup I lived off of, and was used to hand washing everything. So while my roommates would load everything in the dishwasher and let everything overflow there and in the sink, I would wash my few dishes and towel dry them before returning them to my room. Occasionally I would go on an ADHD-induced cleaning spree and clean all of the dishes, including what had been left in the dishwasher, so it never got so bad that we couldn't at least do sh asterisk t in the kitchen. One day they called a household meeting. My two roommates were eyeing me the entire time as they went over this dish issue and said from then on, everyone was responsible for their own dishes. Cue malicious compliance. I stopped cleaning their messes. I used my personal microwave that I'd brought in from the dorms. I even stopped using their dishes, except for making macaroni and cheese. Everything continued to pile up. There was often very little counter space in our rather large kitchen, and every time they saw me, they would glare. But I was doing my own dishes, just as they'd asked. It all came to a head on one of the days I decided to make macaroni. I was in the midst of eating my lunch, and had decided I would clean my dishes when I was, you know, done eating. Well, the bitchier of the two roommates came home and saw me casually eating in the living room and tried to accuse me of not cleaning my fair share of dishes. I looked up at her and flatly said that I would gladly point out exactly which dishes were mine in the kitchen. She seemed to have thought she had won based on the smug look she gave me. Bowl in hand, I walked her to the kitchen and pointed out the pot, wooden spoon, and colander I had used to make my lunch, then motioned to my half-filled bowl and said that I just made myself food. I asked her as innocently as I could manage if I should have washed what I had cooked with before sitting down to enjoy my food in the living room. She honestly looked ready to blow a gasket. Through gritted teeth she told me that no, that wasn't expected of me. With a smile, I told her I'd clean my mess after I finished eating then, and watched her look around at the pile of plates, pots, 
and pans that she and our other roommate had let pile up in their attempt to either bully me into cleaning their sh asterisk t more often or prove some sort of point about me leaving everything a mess. They didn't bother me about cleaning up after myself for the last two months we lived together. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.